What is up you thick, real end loving people? If you clicked on this video, you more than likely have an interest in the V-Rod Muscle. So if you don't know, my V-Rod Muscle has been leaking oil and in the previous videos, I took apart the V-Rod to diagnose what the problem was and I determined that it was a front breather hose or at least the O-rings or the tubing that goes around that breather hose or that, I guess the breather, well, I, don't know, I guess it's the breather assembly part that, um, that has caused oil to leak around the motor of my V-Rod. And in this video, I kind of just want to talk about briefly about the parts that are associated with fixing this and the whole idea of the Harley tax. So as of right now, this is where my V-Rod is. I have the uh, this duct tape over these, I guess, what is this, the uh, air ducts. And if I were to take those breather, these these uh, holes or these ducts off, you're looking directly into the, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the intake valve um, on the inside of these cylinders. So obviously you don't want anything to get in here, but the whole thing that caused this oil leak to begin with, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's oil all down in there. For people that don't know, this is the breather port, and basically there's a little, uh, I guess, uh, uh, gun casing looking uh, uh, device that goes in that hole, and that is what, uh, basically the O-ring around it and the breather tube that connects it to the air box is what leaks. Now, as I said before, the whole reason I'm doing this, because the fix is somewhat easy. You just replace the port, you make sure it's secure, you change the O-ring and the uh, tubing that goes over that assembly part or that gun shell looking device and it essentially fixes the leak. But there are so many people that don't know about the V-Rod and what's involved. So that is why I'm so detailed in showing people how this works. I don't know what the exact name of this thing is. But I just know it's part of the breather tube assembly. I just call it the ammo shell. That's what other pe people call it. But this is not the problem. This is not what causes the oil leak. The O-rings tend to dry right from old age and the oil breaks down components. And also the tube that goes on top of this is what ends up dry rotting and causing leaks from, uh, I guess, when the oil is coming from the breather up in, up, up in the air box, that oil tends to seep past and it tends to go everywhere. So this little guy's not the problem, but this is a component of the problem. It's just not the problem. So I decided to go online and buy these parts rather than go into my local Harley Davidson. I don't really have a relationship with my local Harley Davidson. And plus I just like ordering my parts online because to me it's easier and I still am gonna have, I'm still gonna have to wait for those parts anyway, right? So in total, my parts cost me $21.45 and with shipping $13.60 for a total of $35.05. And the parts that I ordered, I ordered the uh, gasket for the throttle body because it was leaking uh, from the air box above that uh, throttle body. There was oil there. That gasket is pretty much old and brittle. Also ordered the uh, the breather front. So you have the rear breather hose and you have the front breather hose. I showed you guys before, the breather hose in the rear can also be a cause of leaks for the V-Rod, but in my case it was not. It was the one in the front. The breather tube is simply that, the breather tube assembly that goes over that gun, that ammo looking, that shell looking device, um, that leaks and tends to cause that breather hose to leak all over the engine. That cost me $12.49. The gasket for the throttle body was $2.99. I also ordered, I probably didn't have to buy these. I ordered two O-rings for the velocity stacks because I did see that some oil was around that area too. And I don't want, I'm, well, I'm trying to prevent, um, I guess, oil from getting into the air filter as much as possible because oil will get in there. But if I can change those O-rings out and they're $1.99 a piece, why not change them, right? And I also changed out, well, I also ordered the O-ring for that ammo shell looking device, the breather, and that was only $1.99. And I also, I wanna say that was it. And that came out to around, yeah, 21 bucks and 45 cents. So to fix this outside of labor, I think labor for most shops right now is probably, probably let's say 100 bucks, and, and it might be more. You're looking at around 100 and probably 25 bucks to take this bike to the shop to get it fixed, maybe, even if it's 150 bucks, I guess you can probably say you can get this oil leak fixed for under $200. But I don't know if that involves actually cleaning up the oil that's there. If you if you know anything about that, comment down, comment down below. But a part of the reason why I did this is because now I can tell you that I actually know how to take all of this stuff apart, right? And surprisingly, if you didn't know, to even uh, to install a turbo system on a V-Rod muscle, one of you rod in general, part of like, I'd probably say 50% of the job is getting to this point and uh, being able to route the uh, the oil lines and uh, installing the, uh, the new breather system. A lot of it is taking this stuff off. So 
when I was actually looking at doing this project, I said I could take it to Harley Davidson or I could learn how to do it myself because going forward, I can install new parts. Um, and again, part of the part of the job is getting to those points. So I know how to do that now. There were a few other parts that I thought about replacing, but I decided to just hold off on. And one of those parts was the air filter itself, which came out to about 42 bucks. And the reason I didn't is because I thought that at some point I might get a upgraded air filter. So I decided not to spend the 42 bucks on it. I also looked at just because to see how much that, um, that bottom air filter assembly cost, because I did mention in the previous video that mine was kind of zip tied and jerry rigged together, which I'm not bad about. Again, some people said like, it's really nothing to, I guess, be upset about. And I wasn't upset. I was just pointing out that that's kind of what happens when you buy used bikes. You just never can rule out everything that's possibly wrong or right with the bike. But anyway, the price of that bottom assembly was I think about $55. So not too expensive, but you know, it didn't make sense to replace that entire assembly for that one portion. So it made sense to zip tie it. I also looked at last video, I had some trouble with my throttle body and my fuel rail. And I thought, what if I actually break this? How much would it cost me to replace it? Well, the throttle body assembly came out to around $357, which I thought was kind of reasonable. And I say that because my Suzuki N109R, I looked up the throttle body assembly and I know these bikes are wildly different. The motors, are, everything about these bikes is different, right? The N109R has an 1800 cc motor. The v rod has a 1200 cc motor, different companies, different way of doing things. But the throttle body assembly for the 109 came out to around 1200 bucks. And the V-Ross was only 357 bucks. And again, different motors, there's a lot of different technology going on, different years uh, in the, uh, the bikes. But I, I just thought about it that when people say, you know, there's a Harley tax on, on uh, buying the bikes, I wondered if it's more so just the price of the bike and the components are, I guess the parts are cheaper. But I didn't go for an apples to apples comparison on what this costs on this bike and what costs on that bike. But if y'all wanna see that in the future, comparing the 109s, I guess part catalog or some of the parts to the V-Rods um, parts, let me know and I'll, I'll definitely do that. And I also looked at the fuel rail. So the fuel rail for the V-Rod was only 245 bucks. Now, I don't remember if that involved the, um, the fuel injectors, but the fuel rail assembly itself was 245 bucks. And what's crazy is these rubber boots, these rubber boots that, uh, that, uh, that are sitting on top of the cylinders right here or, or the intake valve, those are each 58 bucks. So those are, I guess, a little pricey, but I was overall pleased that I guess how much these parts cost, but then I got interested and I uh, went down the rabbit hole on eBay. Well, before I get to eBay, one of the, Vel the Velocity stacks also is 17 bucks. So I'd imagine the, the uh, I think it was the front one was 17 bucks. So that means the one in the rear might only be like 18 or 15 bucks as well. So overall the parts aren't that bad, but I went on eBay. And then I messed around and saw that there's carbon fiber um, panels for the V-Rod. And they're honestly not that expensive. They're like 280 bucks for like one panel. And uh, I just thought to myself, dang, I could really probably get the V-Rod carbon fiber for less than a thousand bucks. So I don't know if there's interest in that, I would totally do it. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of fell down about an hour <laughs> rabbit hole looking at V-Rod uh, components. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially how much the bike uh, the bike parts cost to fix again this oil leak and eventually I'm gonna today gonna get all this oil out of here as much as I can and I thought about this I actually got to remove the battery too because there's like spots down in there that I can get with they clean up clean up the oil but, <laughs> um, you guys can see right here this is all caked on oil that's caked on oil like if I were to rub that that's gonna be oil and uh, that oil goes all the way down up in there so one little port right here and more than likely the air has pushed that oil all over the place. And uh, I had some oil, yeah, right behind here too. This oil all around this thing. But today I'm actually gonna clean it. I went to my local AutoZone and simply picked up some carb cleaner and uh, some shop rags, some extra shop rags. And I'm just gonna go by hand and clean some of this stuff. I still might use some dishwashing soap. I'm not really sure about that because these electrical connectors, um, I might get some soapy water and clean it but I know the car cleaner is not gonna damage those electrical connectors, but I know for the soap wise, that's gonna be really good at scrubbing a lot of that off. And I'm just gonna take a brass brush, I think, and uh, clean it off. Yeah, so let me know what y'all think about that down in the comments. It seems that the Harley tax, at least on the V-Rod, was actually not too bad this time around. And 
everything came out to around 35 bucks and 13 of that being sh uh, shipping. Like I said, I could have went down to my local Harley Davidson, but I just don't have a relationship with them. And rather than waste time going down there and trying to order parts, I didn't know what the part numbers were. I just looked at the catalog online and I was able to order everything I need. So it should be here within uh, at max 10 days, hopefully. And uh, we'll be able to get it going. But until then, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this oil. And then today I'm actually gonna be doing a fuel pressure test on the 109 because it's still got some weird issues going. So I'm gonna figure that out. So if you wanna stick around for that, definitely hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for listening to my story. But of course, if you are subscribed, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.